What's going on guys, welcome to the video, my name is Scott aka Fat Dad and in this video, with a little help, I'm going to be talking to you about some tips and exercises to help deal with that new dad stress. So you're a few weeks or a few months into being a new dad and suddenly the little things are starting to get on top of you. Your fuse is almost gone and you and your partner are at each other's throats. This is completely normal, you've just had a massive life changing event and things are naturally going to change. What you need to do is recognize those changes and with a little help today as I say, we're gonna give you some tips and exercises to help you manage that stress better. So if you're anything like me, your default mechanism when things start getting on top of you is to just bury it down, deep, deep down and just soldier on. Well, I've brought someone here with me today who's gonna to show you and me better ways to cope with stress. So this handsome gentleman to my left is Thomas Regan. He is the owner and founder of Cycle Elite Mental Performance. He's also a powerlifting coach here at Taylor's. Thomas, thanks for doing this for us, really no appreciate worries. it. Why don't you tell the guys a little bit about you and your background? So my background is in sports performance. So I went to university, did a bachelor's, and then did a master's. Um, and then I came here, started my mental performance business. I uh, started going down the route of the well-being side with my mindfulness and meditation and now I'm a personal trainer so I do both from the gym. Awesome. Um, all of Thomas's social links is YouTube, uh, Instagram and website will be linked in the description down below. Make sure you check him out. He's always posting top tips which are you know, on the money. So some of the main causes of new dad stress can be limited paternity leave. We only get two weeks compared to up to, that, up to 12 months for women. Um, it could be disrupted sleep. Uh, research suggests that on average, until a child is two, parents lose about six months sleep over that two year period. With new responsibilities, financial strain, less couple time, less special time, along with depression, it's actually been reported that men as well as women can actually suffer from postnatal depression. So, with that all said, we've listed out what's causing us stress. This man right here is going to give us all the tips and tricks that we need to cope with it. Thomas? Okay, so I think the first one we should um, look at is the mindfulness aspect of parenting. Um, obviously, I'm not a parent, but with the mindfulness stuff, um, try and be better in the moment. So, what I mean by that is, is that just take everything as it comes. Don't focus on the negatives or don't focus on the future negatives if there is any. Don't focus too much, well, you focus on positives, but mostly focus on um, being in the now. So if that means you have to get up for the baby's bottle, then you have to get up. Don't think about, oh, I'm not getting enough sleep. I've got to go to work the next day. Just do what you have to do in the moment in time. So just try and enjoy that bond. So if you are up with the baby, rather than thinking, like, there's an hour of sleep I'm losing, it's in the here and now, I'm getting to bond with my baby whilst my missus is asleep. Exactly, yeah, exactly. And it's time you won't get back either. So even though it might be a burden at the waking up at three or four o'clock in the morning, at least um, think of it as, you know what, you give them the bottle, you give them your baby a bottle, you need to feed your baby, and that's what's most important at that moment in time. Awesome. So the next point is um, unwinding trying to do things to de-stress you and for you alone. So if you need an hour or two a week, if you can get out the house to, I don't know, like for Scott, for example, you go lift, mm -hmm. or if you want to go for a run, it takes about 20 minutes, de-stress, and play on uh, PlayStation or Xbox, whatever you like to do, um, try and get to unwind when you can. It's a really good point that and just touch on my kind of experience is that one of the things we would do is we would take turns and we still to this the point now we take turns so if one of us put into bed last night then it's the next person's turn if you know one of us has just done a shitty nappy then okay the next one is you it's about communicating and working with each other you're a team at the end of the day and um, so you want to approach it like a team yeah and i think if you don't focus on a team effort then whoever's doing, them, whoever's doing more work will probably get more stressed because of that and little things will probably get more agitated and that just equates to more stress in the house and that's not what we want. Absolutely. Okay, my next point will be on journaling. So this is a fairly new thing for me, but as a new parent, you could try and do um, a single journal each just to try and get your thoughts and feelings out on a notepad and you could even do a couple's journal so you can both come together maybe when the baby's asleep 
and just um, take off what, um, what has gone well that day and focus on the positives. Um, what, and then just try and, I know it's hard, but try and put stuff on the paper that you could do that week. So for example, say you want to try and get out um, one night if you can. And just write it down and then once you write it down, you'll be more obliged to do something and you get time off from the week as well. Sounds good. And remember, um, no parent is perfect, nobody's perfect. So for me, um, just write, uh, write down all your positives that you've done that day and make your um, gratitude as well. What, what makes you, what have you done that day that has helped you, your family, and the baby as well. well we talked about some really good tips there in terms of coping with new dad stress, things to be aware of, maybe things to try. But Thomas has got a few more exercises that you can help implement to help deal with your new dad stress. So, what I like to call these is coping strategies. So, how you cope with stress and what you do to cope with that stress. So, my first point, I already alluded to it, was the mindfulness. So mindfulness is a daily practice and you do it all the time. And when I first started it, I wasn't that good at it. But eventually, slowly, I just got better at it, better at it, and now it's in my everyday life. So just practice mindfulness. And I would suggest going on like YouTube, other channels, or research what mindfulness is and go, and go from there. Sounds good. Next point is um, mental toughness. Now, this doesn't mean that you have to be strong all the time, that's not what mental toughness is. Mental toughness is dealing with highly stressful situations and being calm in the moment in doing that stressful situation. So for example, you might be really, really tired and getting up, having a bottle feed and you've just got to be mentally tough and slug it out and know yep. that it, it's not for you, obviously it's for the baby. Yep. So that comes into it with the mental toughness. Yeah, just say like, none of this is for you. You're not getting up at three o'clock in the morning for your benefit. Maybe to some extent so the baby stops crying, but you'll be surprised how much this kind of like new parent mentality quickly kicks in. Um, and as I've alluded to in previous videos, is that you know it does become a habit that routine does kick in. So do give yourself a break, you know, implement some of these tips that Thomas was talking about, um, and you will find that that stress should uh, should come down a few levels. Yeah, and that's, that, that was actually going to be my next point was um, unwinding. Nice. And um, so what what you do in your spare time, just make sure that it's what you want to do and you need to do. Mm. Um, so for example. Don't think that you've got five minutes from the baby. Think having time to yourself is cleaning dishes. That's not yeah. what it is at all. No. It's, you know, having, having an escape. Yeah. Having an escape from the life of your child. Because, absolutely. I was going to say, because at the end of the day, um, you're still a person. You're still human. It's not, you're not just a dad. You are Scott. You are yeah. whoever. You are a mum. You are. It, it doesn't matter. Um, I think that you've got to remind yourself every now and again that you're not just a parent, you are yourself, you are your own person. Yeah, that's really valid. So a couple of things that I do to kind of a little bit of me time, if you like, is um, I love reading books. So of an evening, I, I will read before I go to bed. Um, you know, my wife, she enjoys playing on her Nintendo Switch. So that's how she um, kind of de-stresses and kind of spends a little bit of her time. We enjoy watching TV and films together. So that's kind of our, our couple's time and, and implementing that practice that you were saying there. Um, obviously, I make videos and, and, and train at the gym as well. So, you know, it may, from the outside looking in, it may seem selfish that, oh, you've got a baby, but you're still going to the gym or you're still exercising. But it's no good to the baby if you don't go and exercise, if you don't take any time for yourself and you are just letting these things get on top of you because eventually it's going to spill over into family life. And with the best will in the world, at some point you're going to snap, you're going you're gonna to potentially break and just be burnt out. Yeah. So, Yes, it's fine people saying, oh, that's selfish, you go in the gym. They're not in your situation. Every parent is different. Every parent copes with things in a different way. Find what works for you. Take some of these tips and exercises that Thomas has said. Implement them in your life. Try them out. They're either for you or they're not. Another point is that just because something, like you said, something works for one parent doesn't work for another parent. Yeah. It's just about finding your niche and finding what you want to do and what and finding your parent style go a bit into a bit more depth with yeah, like okay. social social learning theory and stuff. Okay, cool. So if your kid's growing up and you're always stressed in the house, that kid is gonna grow up knowing that 
family life is stress. Mm. If you don't de-stress and if you come in like agitated or angry or you're having little bitter arguments with your with your spouse, yep. your kid's gonna learn that even though they're only a couple of months old, six months, a year, whatever, they are gonna learn that. So from a social learning point of view, I think it is right for you to um, go into the gym, de-stress, come home, be happier, um, and then your family unit's just gonna get stronger from you having your own time too. So there you go, not only have we got entertainers on this channel, we've got science, social science, ladies and gentlemen. There you go. Um, on my last point, um, personally, I don't do it, but I know it has its benefits for some people, and that is meditation. So for me, I think if you can learn to quieten your mind by just sitting there, um, I think that might help a little bit with how to cope with stress, um, how to cope with emotions that are just coming up and um, because with mindfulness you need to just like mm. let it go kind of thing so i think meditation might be helpful for some it doesn't really work for me because i don't do it but instead i do like a yoga practice and i think um, i'm still getting the active um, physical side and i am also getting the mental side by just fully focusing in the moment again mindfulness mm. with the stretches and yeah. But if you want to try meditation, you could try that too. Sounds good. I've, I personally, have, yeah, I've experimented with, with yoga. I've tried the, the meditation thing and my mind just races too much. I, yeah. I've got about 50,000 thoughts going on at any one time, so yeah. meditation for me isn't the best thing. But as you say, find what works for you. Yeah, and with meditation as well, I mean, if you like it sometimes and don't like it other times, if you feel like you need to do it, then go and do it because that's your instinct telling you to do something. If you want to go for a run, Go for a run, and, and if you can go for a run, because um, these are like messages from insane, mm. that makes sense. So, yeah, try it out, see if it works. Yeah, and before anyone in the comments or negative goes, oh, it's not fair, you know, the mum, she's had the baby, why do you get to go for a run? This applies to both parents. Yes, this is, you know, a channel specifically around new dads, but guys, it's about striking a balance. You know, if mum is getting stressed and you're the one who's coping fine, then you know these tips and tricks can help you to recognise that stress in the other parents as well, and maybe you can kind of just say, take the initiative and say, listen, love, um, why don't you go, you know, take 20 minutes for yourself? You know, if you want to go for a drive, if you want to go for a walk, go go have a hot bath, whatever it is. Yeah. These tips and tricks won't just help you; they'll help you recognise them in your partner as well. And as Thomas says, you know, a calm and, and nurturing home with, you know good ways to minimise stress has absolutely massive impact to social development and, and learning in small babies as you say. So there you have it guys, some tips and tricks from the master at work in terms of how to deal with new dad stress. If there's anything that you've seen here that you like, make sure that you go and check out Thomas's uh, YouTube channel and Instagram. I've also linked to his website in the description below. If this is something that you've enjoyed, give it a thumbs up, make sure you hit subscribe and click that little bell icon. I post new videos every week so be on the lookout for the next one and with that I'll see you in a bit.